Hi guys, I have been doing some experimenting today. Um, so I'm trying two new products today. Um, this is Color Wash Tint by Tattered Angels. And it is uh, aged copper, I believe is what it's called. Yeah, weathered copper. Super pretty. Um, I tried it on a, um, I did a live video on my Facebook page and I tried wiping it and we found that it looked the prettiest actually just on a paper towel. See how pretty that is? It is gorgeous. We decided um, that it would be best on like an unbleached muslin or maybe even a, um, a canvas that has not been gessoed because um, it really washed out uh, in the paint. And I think because it's so thin, I mean, it's really thin. It's kind of like an acrylic ink, but thinner, and it does not have the same pigmentation um, strength that uh, um, ink does. So I mixed it with just medium, and it's it was so transparent. Here it is. It was so transparent, though, that it really lost its brilliance. Um, just didn't do anything interesting like it did on the paper towel. I used it as a wash and it wasn't as pretty as it was on the paper towel. Um, and this time I decided just to thin a regular teal with this instead of adding any medium or water to see if we get that metallic to at least um, come through in the paint a little bit. And that's what I did here, but it really, unfortunately, it really just isn't coming through. Um, the other thing I'm testing is, where did it go? This um, Deco Art Enchanted Iridescent Top Coat. This is in magenta. And I'm trying it, um, not quite as its intended use is, but what I've done, and I didn't mix it all the way so that you could see it. I added it to some pre-mixed white paint that was mixed with medium to see if we get enough of that. Uh, it's not going to be obviously as strong of a iridescent, but enough of it to show through that we could use it as a paint rather than a top coat. So that's why I didn't mix it in all the way so you could sort of see the difference between the white and the magenta. But, um, and that's 50%, almost 50% um, of this, a little under 50%, probably 50% white paint and then my uh, medium and water. But again, unless it dries, um, iridescent. I'm not seeing any of that come through, which is kind of a bummer, but I'm hoping maybe once it dries, some of that will peek through. Um, uh, but we'll see. All right. So I have a canvas ready. I'm going to do kind of a Dutch pour, but to use as much of that as that white as I can to see if any of that magenta, uh, iridescent is going to come through. I'm going to do kind of a Dutch pour. Um, see, this is where I washed the canvas, just a plain dry, unpainted canvas with it um, and you can see you can see flecks of gold but it's not anything exciting all right so I'm going to cover my canvas with this white and I still don't have any hint of that magenta I'm kind of bummed because I've used their um I guess this is folk art and this is deco art. I guess I thought they were the same brand, just a different product. So I've used folk arts, um, dragonfly glaze and mixed it with just medium. Um, and I've mixed it with just color and it really comes through, um, even mixed with paint. And this is meant to be a top coat and it, it's just really pretty in the paint. And this is meant to be a top coat. So I was hoping this would do the same as this, but I used this entire bottle. This is two ounces with that white and that's a five ounce cup. So I used, you know, two parts of this, about two parts of white and then some medium. Um, and it kind of disappeared, which is a bummer. Um, whereas this really shows through. So let's just, let's see, let's add some of this since, um, we're doing a Dutch pour, just add some sparkle. Okay, I'm going to add this in there. Just, I'm going to make it kind of fairy tale -y. It's kind of the thought in my head. So I'm not going to use this peach color. I'm going to use teal. Actually, let's just go pretty, pretty. 
Okay, I'm gonna go princess colors. I'm gonna go pink. This is Arteza. I probably should add some. Uh, okay, so I added some silicone oil to the Arteza. I'm gonna use some pink, some premixed teal, and some premixed pink and the iridescent. We're just gonna go super princessy. Um, any of you have a princess in the house? My princess is not a princess anymore. She is 16, but she went through that princess. I am not a fan of pink. It's not my favorite color. When she was little, um, before she had a voice, I painted her, uh, um, I painted her room purple and teal and she called it her pink room. I kid you not. She was really mad at me one day. I don't remember why. I she probably couldn't watch cartoons or something. And she was like three and she saw, she said, I'm going to go to my pink room. There was nothing pink in her room. <laughs> I didn't decorate it pink. We did eventually uh, give her all the pink things that she so desired. I did not have anything pink or sparkly and man, she went the pink and sparkly way, let me tell you, but she's 16 and she's grown out of that a lot. She's not into pink anymore. But anyway, so this is for those uh, princesses out there who love, or you don't have to be princessy, but just love pink and love all things sparkly. This is, this is for my 16 year old when she was three. <laughs> she does love teal. She's not so much into pink anymore. A little bit more that way. Oh, but that, that three-year-old stage is fun. They're adorable at that age. This is, again, that... Um, Dragonfly glaze, and I just added some water and some Elmer's glue all. Um, I don't remember if I remembered to add oil to that one or not. Everything else has silicone in it. Okay, you're going to see my messy hair. That's okay. I really like this dragonfly glaze. I'm going to do some more of that just by itself over here. Make sure it really comes through. Just a little sparkle here and there. Oh, I can see it. Can you see the light shining on it? I'll do some angled close-ups, but I can really see it in the dark pink. I can see it in the white, just not as easily because the light's not hitting it. But everywhere there's pink, um, it's really, really showing through. Super pretty. I'm going to add just a little bit of dark teal. I just think, whoa, I missed the canvas. What in the world was I doing? <laughs> okay, and then we have to add some of this on top of there, don't we? We can't have this teal without this pretty iridescent color going through. I have with Dutch pours. I'm so close trying to blow. I need to get a doodad um, blower because I get so close and I can't see what's happening on the canvas. This is really pretty right there. Let's add just a little bit with a stick maybe up here. Just a little to bring that color up. This is not just right there, but I don't want to, I don't want a ton. There we go. And of course, some iridescent on top of it because we like the iridescent. I love this stuff. Um, this is really cool. And they have several colors. Where did it go? They have they have several colors. I had two. I think one was a red. This one is, oh, it's so hard to read the labels. This is violet, blue, green shift. I wish they wouldn't make their labels quite so shiny. It's hard to read. Pretty. 
pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay, I've talked so long, the torch probably isn't going to do anything, but let's give it a shot. I mean, it's probably... Everything was pretty settled. Okay, but I can see all of that shimmer and shine. Super pretty. Um, oh, look at these little cells right there. Okay, let's do some close-ups, some angled close-ups so you can see, hopefully. Oh, there you go. Yep, yeah, it's actually... Oh, look at that. So pretty, guys. Once that's varnished and resined, I really, now that the weather's better, we may try resining. Okay, what do you think, even though this one, where did it go, seemed to be a bit of a flop. And unfortunately for pouring, this seemed to be a flop. But if you do any work with fabric, although it is washable with water, so you know you might have to get creative with that. Or, you know what, if you work with resin as well, because resin is clear as opposed to kind of that milky color of mediums and you're not at, this may be wonderful in resin. I don't think you need quite as much pigmentation um, in what you're adding to resin for it to work its magic. So, um, you know, if you've done anything with this, please, please, please share what you have used it for. Um, I would love to see. Um, anyway, let me know what you think of these products or if you have some that you think I need to try, uh, please share them below. And we will see you next time, guys. Happy pouring.